And Dr. Wen, um, a lot of people watch that, that, that Trump spectacle in Tulsa on Saturday night. Different people had different reasons for watching. Um, as a public health specialist, expert, you're watching it, I think, with a prism of, is this a disaster in the making in terms of public health? As you watched it, what did you think? Well, I saw people, John, who were standing shoulder to shoulder and were not wearing masks in close proximity for a prolonged period of time. And I thought about all these individuals, some of whom are older, some of whom probably have chronic medical illnesses, how they could be infected themselves, how they could go back to their home communities, infect their family members, infect everybody else around them. And I also thought about how overburdened our public health infrastructure already is. Already we don't have the contact tracers that we need in order to contain this infection or, frankly, the testing that we need to contain this infection and how, as a result of this one event, we're going to overburden our public health infrastructure even more. So the question of whether Trump actually told uh, the administration to slow down testing or not, uh, we, you know, we, the, 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 their, their claim, the people around Trump as enablers, their claim is that it was just a joke. I'm not sure how they could possibly think it would be funny to be joking about such things at a time when 120,000 uh, Americans are dead from COVID-19. Um, as a, again, as a public health matter, um, talk about both sides of this, right? One, if he actually did tell the administration to slow down testing, um, what is that? What are the implications of that? And second, if not, if he didn't and he's just joking about it, what are the implications of that, from a, again, from a public health perspective? Well, testing is the reason why we're in the disaster that we are in now, or frankly, lack of testing is how we got here. If we were able to do testing back in January, we actually had a chance to contain COVID-19 and prevent the 120,000 deaths that we're coming close to having here in the U.S. Virtually every public health expert, in fact, I will say every public health expert agrees that we need far more testing, that we need a national strategy for identifying every case of individual who has COVID-19, contact tracing, and ideally then reigning in the infection at that point. We had a chance to stop the infection. We still have a chance to identify clusters before they become outbreaks, outbreaks before they become epidemics. C testing is key to that. And it really defies science. It defines public health. And frankly, it defies common sense as to why we would want to do something intentionally to reduce testing, when all along we've been saying that we need a national strategy. We need a coordinated effort so that we can get from hundreds of thousands of tests a day, which is where we are now, to millions of tests. Testing is the key to reopening our economy, to getting schools back open, and we need to see the president speak the truth about what actually has been happening here. All right, so spe thinking about speaking the truth, um Two senior administration officials, Peter Navarro and Larry Kudlow, um, yesterday on CNN, Navarro said when asked about whether the administration is preparing for a second wave of, of COVID-19, I'm not even sure the first wave's over yet, I don't think it is, but in any case, he was asked that question. Navarro said, of course we're preparing for it. Kudlow this morning on CNBC says there is no second wave coming. So these are two senior administration officials saying diametrically opposed things about what is happening and what the expectations are going forward. How disconcerting is it to you that there is that kind of mixed messaging coming out of the White House? And what's your sense to the extent you know what actually is going on in terms of the administration? Which of those two is the presumption they're operating under currently? Well, to your first question, clear, direct messaging is everything. That's what was key to containing COVID-19 and other countries that have successfully fought it. Public health depends on public trust, and you can't have government officials who are politicizing this tragedy and completely at odds with the scientific community. And in terms of where we are, we are not anywhere close to being past the first wave of COVID-19. We're at the steady state now of hundreds of deaths a day, and this this is increasing. We're seeing surges across the South and the Southeast. We're seeing hospitals getting full, ICUs actually getting full in parts of Texas, Alabama, Arizona, Florida, really concerning trends. And that's before we even hit the fall, where we're going to get the confluence of influenza and flu season on top of COVID-19 too. So what we really should be seeing right now is preparation for if something like that were to happen. We need a national strategy, again, for testing. We also need to make sure sure that we don't run out of PPE, the masks and gowns and other things that we did last time. We right. can't, again, have tens of thousands of healthcare workers on the front lines being exposed and getting infected. That's what we should be focused on now.
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.